Hi all, it's Kirsten. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today's video we are reviewing two V.E. Schwab books, The Near Witch and The Dark Vault. I'm going to put a timestamp for The Dark Vault just in case you're not interested in The Near Witch, as that's the book I'm reviewing first, but let's get straight to it. So, The Near Witch I read in April as part of my History of Magic examination of the Owls Readathon, and I oh, really, really enjoyed this book. But before I get into it, can we just appreciate this cover? Like, look how gorgeous this is, and the paper, oh, the pages, like, that's stunning. So basically, this is V. Schwab's debut novel, and it got a reprint in this gorgeous edition, which I just picked up, and I saw it, and I was like, V. Schwab, gorgeous cover, is mine. Like, I didn't even bother reading the back. I was like, I'm just gonna do it. And honestly, I'm so pleased I did. It's such a good book. So basically the premise of this book is a place called Near. This is in the moors and there are a few things that they've kind of, as children, they've all grown up believing. One, there's never any strangers in Near. Two, you don't go out onto the moors. And three, the Near Witch is dead. They're the things that they have been brought up with. And at the start of this book, on the very first night, a stranger comes to town and of course things start going wrong from there. The next night children from the town start going missing. Majority of the men in the village think it's this stranger and are out to get him. It's basically just a mob wanting an answer even if it's not true. They haven't even looked into this. They just like well it wouldn't be anyone else. There's no other explanation. That's what I'm going to do. Lexi the main protagonist whose point of view you see this book from is only a single point of view doesn't believe this. She's just like, I'm not going to target a stranger when we don't even know if it's him that's doing this. He just, it's a coincidence. It could easily be a coincidence. And so she's going out to try and prove them wrong. Because of this, her uncle and a lot of the men in the village are fully against her. They were against her from the beginning anyway because she doesn't act as a girl should. That she doesn't like just stay in the kitchen and bake things and she doesn't wear all the pretty dresses and the proper shoes and she doesn't do all of this. Like she is her father's daughter who unfortunately passed away and you know that from the beginning of the book. And she is not going to accept this. She is going to find out the truth of what's happened and that is what you find out. And this, honestly, it reads like a proper children's fairy tale and I love it. There is obviously witches in this book, which is why it passed for my History of Magic exam and it was just such an enjoyable read. I will say it's not her best written work in the sense that her technical abilities are better in her later novels, but obviously you expect this because it is her debut novel. However, the fact that it is so atmospheric, it really does feel like a children's fairy tale, is just amazing. I don't really believe it's an adult fantasy novel, although that is the section where I get all of Vee Schwab's books, they're always in the adult section, apart from some of her other works which is under the name Victoria Schwab. Then those are in the young adult section. Personally, I feel like this is a young adult novel. I don't necessarily think it is adult fantasy, but that's just my personal opinion. And I know that the line between the two can be a little bit blurred sometimes, but really enjoyable read. I gave it five stars. I absolutely love the story. I love the character in it. In this edition, you also get an extra short story, which is called The Ash Boy. And that's explaining the backstory behind The Stranger, which you don't get a lot of in The Near Witch. But then with this little edition, you learn more about him and, oh, he is just so precious and I want to look after him. But yeah, I just, I really, really enjoy this book. I like the fact that it questions the way women were forced to be and sometimes in some situations still are. And the fact that, you know, they didn't have to be just married off. They don't have to be doing whatever men say. And the fact that she rebels against that, I quite like. I always like a strong female character anyway. I just think it worked really well. And it goes against prejudice and things like this. So people being very narrow-minded. I just think I love the boundaries that it pushes in this book. And it was just such an enjoyable read. I read this in two sittings. It didn't take long at all. It is a short book anyway, but it is one that I can say is now a favourite. I will do a separate video where I actually rank all of the Schwab's books on what ones I enjoy the most to the least, but as it stands, this is probably my favourite, I won't lie. So the next book is The Dark Vault by V.E. Schwab. This is actually two books in one, so you've got the Archived and the Unbound and they're done together. This was for my Charms examination and that was to read something with a white cover. 
well, has a white cover. I hadn't actually read this book yet, so I figured it worked really well. I'm going to talk about the books individually, and then I'm going to give my overall star rating to the duology as a whole. So starting off with the archive, you are introduced to this world where there is a thing called histories, which is when you die, there isn't a heaven or hell in this book. Instead, you are made into a history. So almost like a book of everything that you've done in your past life. You are memories, basically, and they are kept in the archive. Now, sometimes these histories will wake up. It could be that they're children and they died too young, or it could be that they're particularly violent people. And so when they wake up, it is a keeper's job to make sure they can't get into the physical world and interact with us. So the keeper obviously is Mackenzie, who is our main protagonist. Again, this is a single point of view story and we follow her as she's having to lie to her family. She's dealing with other trauma in her life at the same time and she's just moved to this really old house and she is her history count is going up nuts. She's having to try and keep on top of it and put them all back. And they're like, well, it's an old building. It's gonna happen more. And it's just like, yeah, but really? Like, that's a lot. And she's only a kid, like, she's a teenager. She's in summer break and she's just had to deal with her brother passing away. She is just going through so much stuff. But the archive is such a good book. You get a bit of murder mystery going on. She's trying to solve this murder that's happened years and years ago that's apparently been like wiped out of the system that even the archive don't know about it. She's trying to unravel so much stuff, but because she's doing this, she's starting to cause issues within the archive. People are going like, well, she's not fit for her job. And alongside all of this, she meets a guy called Wesley who also turns out to be a keeper. I mean, you know that pretty early on in the book anyway, so it's not that big a deal. And you've got a love triangle going on in this book. Like there's a lot going on and I really, really enjoyed this first book. I thought it was really well written and I honestly read it all so quickly. I think I read it all, yeah, again, I think two sittings and that's only because I had to sleep because I was so tired. Otherwise, I could have easily read it in one sitting. Even though it's two books in one, this isn't that big. I think each book worked out that it was about just over 300 pages each. So it's not that bad. The second book, Unbound. Ugh, where do I begin? Okay, so the premise of it is really good. So obviously we're carrying on. There's been a whole big fallout in the archive. You've had basically loads of lies about the archive come to light. And so Mackenzie is trying to deal with all of this and she is struggling, like she is really struggling. And she thinks that she's going a bit crazy. I can't say why too much because that will give away a big point in the story, but she thinks she's going crazy and she's really struggling and she's having to start a new school as well. And she is just super stressed out. And honestly, with all of that, this would be an amazing book, especially because things keep happening around her. So people that she's bumping into are now all of a sudden going missing. And that's an add in to her whole, oh my God, am I going crazy situation? People are going missing. There's so many lies that's happened. Like she's having nightmares. She is just having a really hard time. The problem that I have with this book, and it's kind of pulled it down for me and made it still an enjoyable read. I still read it in two days but not quite as enjoyable is the fact that we have the school setting and there are parts that happen in it and I just feel like it's not needed. So we have the whole trying to get used to new friends, trying to do all of that. And I understand she's a teenager and that is part of life. But at the same time, every time that would happen, I'd be like, I just want to skip ahead. I just want to get back to what's really happening. And then we would also have another love triangle. Now the first love triangle, that made more sense. It kind of added to the plot. It worked. This second one, adds nothing to the story, absolutely nothing. I'm just like, I don't, don't get me wrong, I enjoy a good love triangle trope, but really? I just feel like this was not needed. And that's where, that kind of tied in with the high school set and stuff as well, because it is, I don't need this part at all. So that was frustrating, and that kind of, for me, made it so that this wasn't as good a score. I was gonna be giving it four stars, I did really enjoy it. It is more on the young adult side of things, it's a really enjoyable read though, super quick, but with all of the stuff that happened in the second book, there are things that I just feel like could have been done a bit better. Again, the love triangle trope was just not needed in this second book, and that all could just kind of brought it down to me to a 3.5. Overall, still good, but just not that enjoyable. 
Like, it's great if I want to break from having read something high adult fantasy, something that's really heavy. This will be a great, even though it's a chunky book, it will be a great break from that because it is such an easy read. It's quick, it's easy, there's nothing too much to it. It's, it's a good read, but I just feel like it had so much more potential. But that's my personal opinion. The question to you lot, have you actually read either of these two books and which one was your favourite? Or do you disagree with what I'm saying and you think that they're a lot better or that they're a lot worse than what I've said? Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Don't forget to give it a like and subscribe if you enjoyed it and I will catch you in the next one.